Hello and welcome to The Hearing, our music review show here on the channel. I'm Joan. And I'm Scott O. And before we get to this week's album, just a couple of things to mention. Um, I, as of last week, actually last week and you know, th for this week, I was concerned that, well, to quote an old a good movie, my commitment to Sparkle Motion would be sorely tested. Um, because Bandmade last Wednesday released a new single and it came with a concert DVD or Blu-ray, depending on which one you bought it, a concert video. Um, it came in on Saturday, so I had plenty of time to watch it. And it was amazing. Two hour show. They played all of world domination. There was a little acoustic section in the middle. Finally got to hear Konami, the lead guitarist, sing backup. Um, and then the end of the show went, oh, first off, they played an instrumental that isn't on any of their albums. I'm really hoping it's going to be on the next one. Um, and at the end of the show, it went completely off the rails. Psyche crowd surfed at the end of one of the last few songs. And she disappeared. Miku had to sing the last chorus on her own. It's like he comes back for the next song, no shoes. <laughs> like band-made shows don't get that wild. So it was really amazing. And just to hear all of the songs, everything from World Domination and an instrumental that I'm really curious about now if it's going to be coming back. You um, never know. Sometimes bands will just play an instrumental yeah, alive and then, then this, people make a studio. There, which, is, um, which may happen, but this was, it wasn't just a jam session. This was con composed and there was even a second guitar, a third guitar part tracked that they used. So I'm hoping it, it's something formal that ends up on the yeah. next album. And on to some feedback. Um, we got a tweet, uh, a reply to our tweet about last week's episode from Prestamico, the band who we oh. reviewed last time. Um, they also retweeted um, that tweet, so thank you for retweeting our episode. Um, thanks, thanks. They said, uh, Achan and Scano, this is so awesome. Thanks so much for your kind words. Hopefully catch you both at a show when we finally get over to the States. Thanks, guys. Glad you enjoyed the review. Um, I actually didn't tag them on that post and that tweet because, you know, you weren't sure if you wanted to recommend it, and, you know, it wasn't a great <laughs> review. <laughs> so I, I, was, I didn't yeah. want to tag them, but I'm glad they appreciated it. And on to this week's album, which is from 1990, Flood by They Might Be Giants. Um, they Might Be Giants, often abbrevi abbreviated as TMVG, is an American alternative rock band. I don't know if rock really fits, but alternative band formed in 1982 by John Flansburg and John Linnell in Brooklyn, New York. They do it's, some rock here and there, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. True. Um, incidentally, their name comes from a 1971 George C. Scott movie that we reviewed on Zombie Takeout yes, back in did. 2010. Um, uh, Lin uh, and Flansburg often referred to by fans as just the Johns. Um, <laughs> right, right. First met as teenagers growing up in Lincoln, Massachusetts. They began writing songs together while attending Lincoln Sudbury Regional High School, but did not form a band at that time. Uh, the two attended separate colleges after high school, and Linnell joined a band called The Mundanes, a new wave group in Rhode Island. Uh, the two reunited in 81 after moving to Brooklyn to the same apartment building on the same day, unplanned, I'm guessing. Uh, that's like, wow. interesting. Um, to continue their career. Um, during TMBG's early years, Flinsberg and Linnell frequently performed as a duo, often accompanied by a drum machine. But in the early 90s, after this album, um, they expanded to a full backing band. Um, the group has an unconventional and experimental style of alternative music. <laughs> That's an understatement. But from um, I understand before this, you know, before they they had a record deal or anything, they were just they did this thing called dial a song. Yeah, I think they still did it up until a few years ago. Like it they kept going it for a long. They, they brought, brought it back, back actually for the last few years. I think they've been uh -huh. doing like an online thing where you can just every day mm -hmm. which is why mm -hmm. they do so many short like right. 30 yeah. second things because you would do, call uh, fingerprints up. from their for their next album yeah right so you would call up and yeah you would just get something like that oh, or wow. like for whatever style that they were doing like like this album you know you uh -huh. have no idea what you're gonna get and and just to add to the weirdness over their career they have found success on the modern rock and college radio charts as well as in children's music and theme music for several tv shows and films Flood is the band's third studio album and their first release on a major label, Electra. Um, they also, it's also generally considered to be the band's definitive release as it, as it is their best selling and most recognizable album. On the album, uh, Linnell and Flansburg also took advantage of new equipment and recording techniques, including unconventional home recorded samples 
Again, understatement. Yeah. Um, <laughs> programmed by Casio FZ1 synthesizer. Bud was released on January 1st, 1990, produced by TMVG, um, by Julian Allen Fonsberg, of course, um, Alan Wynn Stanley, and Clive Langer. And all songs were written by Lynn Allen Fonsberg, except in Istanbul, not Constantinople, which was written by Jimmy Kennedy and Nat Simon. And it features, and this is a list, uh, John Flansburg on songwriting, vocals, guitar, programming, mandolin, and trumpet. I'm amazed by how many instruments just those two play. <laughs> right? <laughs> this is absurd. John Lin Linnell on songwriting, vocals, accordion, keyboards, saxophone, programming, and melodica. I did not know he played sax until now. Oh, yeah. I've seen these guys live. They're They're amazing. <laughs> Um, Alan, as well as additional musicians, Alan Bezozzi on drum programming, Mark Feldman on violin, on Birdhouse on Your Soul, Istanbul, and We Want a Rock. I'm, I'm pronouncing the A very specifically there. Um, Rick McRae, trombone on theme from Blood and Whistling in the Dark. Frank London, a trum trumpet on Birdhouse and Your Soul, Whistling in the Dark, and They Might Be Giants. Charlie Sepulveda, I'm reminded of an old song. Um, yeah, for Think for Ben Zone. Um, on trumpet on Istanbul and your racist friend, Marion Beckinsale on vocals on theme from Flood, Joel Mitchell on vocals on theme from Flood, um, the Skyline staff, uh, hand claps on Particle Man, Arto Lindsay, guitar on Hearing Aid. Yes, that's a guitar toward the end. Oh, and, okay. And Roger Mountainot, apologize if, apologies if I mispronounced that, whip on minimum rate, wage. <laughs> They brought in a professional whipper. Yes. <laughs> For one song. Reminder, I don't edit any songs. Seconds. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Reminder, I don't edit any songs into the videos for copyright reasons, but down in the description, you'll find links to Flood on Spotify and YouTube so you can listen along with us. On to the first track, Theme from Flood. <laughs> I've never heard an album with a theme song before. <laughs> and then how about, you know, they're concerned about the rising ocean levels mm -hmm. back in 1990. Yeah. Well, there are some very prescient things on this album, but... Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah sticking to Abe from Flood, it's like an old-timey promo for the album. Right. Like something that would have been on the radio or like before a movie. I'm really impressed with John's ability to write in different genres. Yeah. Because this really does sound like something from the 40s or 30s. Oh, definitely. It's... You know, mm -hmm. the fact that they they also played that 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 you you know I just assumed that, that most of that was just sampled shit. No, the, the fact though, that they really played that yeah, that's it's impressive, a lot of instruments, actually. Because yeah. there's no credits for samples. I mean, right. the whip wasn't even a sample. Well, you had yeah, all the instrumental that... questions that you you know credits that you read out there. Right. I was like, holy fuck! Well, they there really are played that. On, there are samples on the album. Well, but yeah. there are weird I... things. You know their samples, yeah, exactly. and they're very weird samples. Yeah. <laughs> Everything I think for fun is a real instrument, um, or possibly a synthesizer. Um, yeah, yeah. Just moving on to track two, Bird Has In Your Soul. This definitely has some synthesizer in it. Um, this is one of my favorite TMBG songs. God and damn, it's such a one great of my song. favorites on this album. Marion Call does a great cover of this one. Could be one of the best songs composed in the 20th century, yeah. honestly. It's um, that good. <laughs> Marion Call did a, a series, two albums, um, Sings the Classics Volumes 1 and 2. On Volume 1, she does a great cover of Particle Man. On Volume 2, and I think I've got that straight, she does a great cover of Birdhouse, accompanied just by an acoustic guitar, um, Both in both cases. Um, they're on Bandcamp. I've already looked for her review of Standing Stones to get that link. Um, I would love to try to diagram the opening sentence of this song. <laughs> I had to look up Long Jean Symphony today. I did too last night. Because um, you know, uh, I always thought that was, I was thinking of Haydn's you know, surprise symphony that about yeah, yeah. some a symphony not resting, right. I but not realizing it was, that it's some old dumb radio show. Yeah, I always thought it was some wrong piece of music with no rest in it. It's right. actually just this, this selection of classical music that was used after hours on TV, some TV Sponsored shows. Sponsored by a watch company whose yeah, slogan was. It doesn't yeah. rest. <laughs> but that opening sentence, I'm your only friend, I'm not your only friend, but I'm a little glowing friend, but actually I'm not actual, but really I'm not actually your friend, but I am. <laughs> uh, oh, man. How many contradictions in that? <laughs> I'm also really curious if this song is subtext or if it's really just on the surface about a nightlight and that's it. 
I don't know. But I mean, and and you get your also your first reference to the sea in this. I don't know yeah. what the deal was with the sea in this There's in this album. Shanty later in the album, but the most of it has like a shanty feel to it, you know. But they, they yeah, they. There's they a get, later track that's a proper shanty. Exactly. <laughs> they come right out towards the end with here's an actual sea shanty. But you get the reference of you know lighthouse. Yeah, yeah, and, the know. lighthouse and Jason the Argonauts. I love their references. Of course. I also really like the the bass and kick drum groove because for the verse it's a really just a straight timing. There's not a lot of you yeah. know, swing to it except for the bass and this kick drum, which give it a really nice swing. Yeah, um, it's amazing that they can make a, a timing a time that solid, just a straight groove. Also, love how loud the chorus gets. Oh yeah, and see them do this live is just fucking just, it's just yeah, crazy. <laughs> And the instrumental break is just classic. There's this kind of horn synth horn solo with a siren and you know other kind of synthy horn, other horn sounds, and then this just metal as fuck trumpet comes in. Yeah, it is just brash. Um, Only a few notes, though. You know, it doesn't but, last long either. The sound is just terrifying. Right. <laughs> then back to the uh, the the intro. Mm-hmm. That same sentence. It's a, it's a complicated sentence. That yeah. yeah. On to track two, Lucky Ball and Chain. Now I don't that, remember this one. <laughs> I had never, I'd never heard it before this album. Um, now they go country. Yes. And the mandolin I thought was a very nice touch, but country with synthesizers and fake drums, because there are no real drums on the album. They're all programmed. Oh, okay. It's just a weird sound to have country a country song with synthesizers and fake drums. And it's sort of a valley in like the era canyon in between two towering songs really well, because i think maybe because they were see- they were singles you know so we associate we're, we're connected to them but yeah like, i don't really have any other notes on it like when you uh when, when the, you know i'm more familiar with like the greatest hits for like the earlier stuff that uh-huh. than actually listening to this entire album i think i've only heard it maybe a couple times i know i know, of course i know birdhouse um i know istanbul the singles the sequels particle man you can't know it you can't even be around tmbg fans without knowing particle, fan, particle right, man right right and i heard your racist friend some time ago just because i heard about the song <laughs> oh oh and whistling in the dark i'd know, i'd heard before but that's it i don't remember whistling in the dark well i think actually okay i kind of did it was during my music piracy days when it's, I, heard, I saw a reference to it somewhere and I downloaded it just out of curiosity. Um, but the I think I had the dial a song, which was like the, what they called their greatest hits. Okay. <laughs> and on to track four, which we're, we're talking around, Istanbul, not Constantinople. Oh, this is my favorite damn track. <laughs> the album, actually, I just <laughs> love this. An amazing choice of covers. This is just, I mean, they had no business covering this. <laughs> that Nobody had any business of covering this. They have no business doing 90% of what they do, but it works. But it makes it so right. <laughs> and I totally forgot there was a violin solo on the song. Oh, yes. <laughs> and I love how loud it gets on why they changed it. Just <laughs> right. that line. It's just this bass vocal. And I, I think there's an electric guitar there. The huge drums and a I mean, voice. Yeah, isn't it just like a, a goofy novelty song? Yeah, yeah. Know, was, from... I think it was in a movie or something. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. I probably should have looked that up before we came into this, but <laughs> it's just I, this weird little historical fact that Istanbul used to be called Constantinople, and you know, a lot of the things are around that. A lot of speculation right. that it's just this silly cheesy song that they just do such great things with. <laughs> it's... Made it even weirder. It made it an I- iconic song for them. And I think this is an iconic, this and Bird S both are iconic songs from the 90s. Um, I don't know about that exactly. I mean, now Birdhouse, I know, yeah, you know, you couldn't escape. Yeah. But Istanbul, I mean. It's this just... is very tied to WOCC for me. Yeah. Because we had this, this was 90, so we had this album. And I remember right. playing this a lot. <laughs> There's also a, vo- a voice solo. There's like an instrumental break, but it's all voice vocal, <laughs> with the two of them singing these these counterpoints. Uh, I love the mix of voice accordion and strings in this, by the way. Yeah, it's just they, the the things they were able to do with this cheesy, silly little novelty song are just amazing. 
on to track five, dead. <laughs> Another very odd turn. It's just voice and piano. Uh huh. But there's a weird effect on the vocal. It's kind of a quintessential they might be giant sound actually really? where they take yeah, this okay. old timey piano sound just we're going to have a sing along kind of thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I don't get the lyrics at all. I don't either. One line is about being dead and then or dying and then one line is about a thing on a shelf in a supermarket. Taking it back for the expiration. Yeah. I don't know. A ba- I was once a bag of groceries. Now that reminds me of the line, yeah. Yes. I brought home a bag of groceries and then died. And then I was once a bag of groceries. Yes. That's for my too long up until my expiration date or something. I don't know if these guys actually dropped acid either. <laughs> but I just I don't I get it. I think they're just this. like this. You know, to quote Eric Idle, you don't come up with something like this over a cup of coffee though. <laughs> this isn't even the weirdest thing on the album. That's true. It's not. It gets weirder. But the the mundaneness to it is what yeah, makes yeah. it weird. <laughs> that there's no winking. There's no. <laughs> We're just gonna sing this song like this for three minutes. Yeah. Ah, hilarious! The Giants are a band that I never really got into, but I respect the hell out of. <laughs> They're geniuses. It's just not my cup. Of, it's just never really been my cup of tea. Ironically, two of my favorite artists, Jonathan Colton and Marion Call, are both heavily influenced by. Yeah, them. I think MC Front a lot. Another one of my favorites is very Honestly, influenced by them as well. I, I've liked a lot of their later stuff. Like, I like the I, number of the singles, like the two I've just talked about, and and um and Ang and and Don't Let Start. Like um, the the other the album I proposed that we reviewed, The Else, which is like 2000. It's like after Malcolm in the Middle, uh, Money came in and everything. It's a really good album. Well, there are two Team of the Giants albums on the list. We'll get to the other one someday. Yeah. Um, on to track six, a new favorite of mine, uh, Your Racist Friend. <laughs> everything Old is New. <laughs> Again, another song that is oddly prescient. This song really works today, which is sad. Um. This is the one that ended up on the play on my playlist. Um, just a moment to talk about the playlist because we forgot oh, yeah. to talk about them last week. Um, we've put together Spotify playlists of our favorite songs from each album that we've reviewed. Um, you at this uh, at last I looked at it, you didn't have an Estron song on yours. Um, or, yeah, because it wasn't a real episode. <laughs> okay, I, I included one because I'm I'm a fan. Uh, and and you didn't include a um um blowout song because you weren't you you yeah, were still need, thinking about it, but you weren't on go. that episode either. Um, so yeah, but this is I was sure it was going to be Birdhouse. It actually ended up being your racist friend as my pick for the the what for my playlist. Oh, I don't know if you can do Flood without including Birdhouse in either of our playlists, but well, I really like um, I really like Istanbul. <laughs> Um, love the dramatic opening of this song. I think uh, this has it's, such a talking heads feel to it, doesn't it? And it's the heaviest song on the album, I think. That's true. That is true. Uh, yet it's it mixes slap bass with accordion. Um, honestly, I never really, uh, or at least this is the They Might Be Giants song I'd really like to hear David Byrne cover. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, back in the day, I don't really get as much of like you know the context of it you know i love the lyrics but i don't know i would have appreciated them in 90 i I really love them now now it's like wow they really um they they have a time machine (laughs) (laughs) i also love the guitar solo that was a huge surprise yeah i didn't think john flansburg took solos (laughs) Yeah, I well, thought he was mostly just a rhythm player. Um, I, there's everything. I mean, there's everything. Loved the timing shift into the trumpet solo. Yeah, it goes from a guitar solo to a trumpet solo in a completely different time signature. I mean, the way they play Anna Ng live, it's like almost um, it's bordering on metal at that point, you know? Because <laughs> well, you know, the they... chorus of Anna Ng really is kind of hardcore. <laughs> Loved the line. He let the contents of the bottle do the thinking. Yes. <laughs> oh my god, that's such a good line. And uh, as much as we were talking about their weird, you know, undecipherable lyrics on the last song, and, and even on Birdhouse, um, this song is just very straightforward. Right. And very you know exactly what's gone on here. And another one on to track seven that is 
in in theory, it, it, as a metaphor, very clear. Particle Man, <laughs> another one, great Marion Call cover. Um, and it's practically a polka between the verses. I was thinking more Zydeco, the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, okay, Z- yeah, it's actually, yeah, Zydeco is better. It was a better analogy. Yeah, you're right. I think it's a polka. <laughs> yeah, they do give it polka time. as well. <laughs> yeah, but you're right. I, I, accordion usually means polka to me, but you're right. It is Zydeco. Right. Um, and I it's. Think- I think this is one that um, Open Mike Eagle has uh, referenced. Nice, nice. <laughs> and this one, big, ha- they might be giants. Yeah, yeah. yeah, another one is a big influence. Big, he's very influenced by them. This is another one with a very. This is a very similar theme to re- the previous one, your racist friend, because it really is about prejudice. Oh, I guess so. I mean, it's... and different fighting over differences and it, you know, yeah, the triangle man of... hates particle man. Yeah. I've always just seen it as the weirdness uh, of. Oh no, the, the the analogy has always landed for me. It's, yeah. Oh, everybody who, who they talk about, Particle Man, um, Triangle Man, Universe Man, they're all different and they're all fighting. Yeah. So that that analogy, if I'm right about it, has always landed for me. I, yeah, I think you got. I think you've got it. Um, I love how Stark it gets the beginning of uni- the Universe Man part because it, it's just vocal and bass. Right. <laughs> Brings everything kind of down to this nice. Mel- There's some beautiful dynamics on this album. You know, and nobody fact, really does dynamics anymore. These guys really know dynamics. The fact that they're coming off the heaviest song of the album. Yeah. This. With Zydeco, <laughs> kind of yes. polka. And, right. Yeah. On to track eight, Twisting. Now they go ner- New Wave Surf Rock. Right. It's a very turning Japanese sort of intro to it. With a vo- verse melody that reminds me a lot of the Ramones. And maybe yeah. it's John F- Jolinell's voice as well, because he's kind of nasally like Joey was. Yeah. And I love how overtly cheesy organ the drums are. Like, it was probably just a preset on an old organ. Oh, yeah. Like, they do nothing to hide it or make it sound like <laughs> real drums. I love that. And then just, just suddenly they went surf rock. I... I uh, look, this is why I say it. it's not quite. I don't know if I'll listen to them much, but I just respect the hell out of how skilled they are and how just thoroughly weird and how good they are at it. On to track nine, and I'm going to say this title very clearly We <laughs> Want a Rock, as opposed to I Want to Rock by Twisted right. Sister. This is very definitely not hair metal. <laughs> right. It's another country song. Kind of, sort of. It's, it's. I, I kind of see this as just kind of a new alternative. Um, loved the line. Uh, Throw the crib wide open. Let the people crawl inside. It's really just a pro regression song. We all want prosthetic foreheads on our real heads. That's the line that kind of get, got me because, like, most of it I get. You know, um, you know, a rock to wrap a string around. That's the rock that we all want. Yes. And it's, it's really just about the joys of being of regressing into your childhood, and you know defending the right to do that. We um, all want prosthetic foreheads. And, and I love how they read about, that line's repeated. Yeah, there's all a line about, you know, after <laughs> they say we all want a rock to, 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 to you know, um, curl a string around. Or, yeah. Uh, I don't remember, I'm misquoting this slightly. Um, they see, he says, we all want prosthetic foreheads to put on our real foreheads. <laughs> I didn't even know prosthetic foreheads were a thing. Uh, well, if you're like an alien on Star Trek. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I just there are love many foreheads in the universe. Yeah. Apparently, according to Star Trek, I just I just love the, the the regression angle on that one. Yeah, on to track ten. Um, someone keeps moving my chair. This one reminded me a lot of the B fifty twos musically. It's quite strange. I almost have it. I, I was kind of putting this as one of my candidates for one of the weakest on the uh, on the album. I, I like how uh, the rhythm just hits when they get to the title. Someone, every song, <laughs> right. someone keeps moving my chair. Right, but then you know, coming back to it a few times, uh, listening to it again uh, lately. I mean, the the lyrics are just so weird. Uh-huh. Just all of these bad things. I don't mind that, but there but is someone one keeps thing. My chair, yeah. <laughs> It's like, oh, you, you guys did all that just for that joke, didn't you? <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. And I think this one was particularly influential for, for Jonathan Colton, but we'll get to him next week. Um, yeah. yeah, you've heard a few songs, but you're not really familiar. On to track 11, Hearing Aid. Well, we get some reggae now. <laughs> yeah, now it goes reggae. 
but it starts with this weird voice sample. Yeah. That is singing something. I think it's probably something like from, you know, the 30s or 40s that was really slowed down. It was a nice surprise to hear John Flansburg. Oh, uh, up until now it had been all Linnell. What's that? Up until now it had been all John Linnell. So John Flansburg oh, was yeah, a nice yeah. surprise. Um, loved the kind of um, loved the kind of electric motor sounding sample in between the verses. Yeah, they get really weird sound. with this musically. It, it kind of sounds like an electric motor, like kind of shifting speeds. Um, and the competing horn solos were nice because they were atonal but kind of harmonizing in a weird way. And then it ends with what I'm guessing is a guitar solo because <laughs> the guitarist is credited for play with playing on the track. Yeah, that, that was definitely a guitar solo. Very psychedelic kind of guitar solo to um, it. Uh, going back to Marion Cole, it reminded me of um, No Paper. The the, um, the guitarist, um, I can't believe I'm blanking on his name, um, was, was told to play like an 11-year-old kid who just picked up a guitar for the first time. <laughs> That's kind of this kind of, but was done on this too. You know, it's just yeah. kind of make noise with a guitar. Now on to track 12, possibly the most interesting song on the album, Minimum could be, Wage. Could be one of my favorite, too. <laughs> Who's saying that? Well, okay, there's one line. There's two words. The title is the only lyric in the song. In this big voice, Minimum Wage. I think it yeah. might... <laughs> yeah. Whip yeah. Sound. <laughs> the whip sound. Yeah. Is, I think it might be Flansburg. It doesn't sound like Linnell. Yeah, no other vocalists are no you know, are credited for this song, so I, it has to be one of the Johns. Um, a great, they did again a great time, a great job of writing old timey music because again it sounds like thirties, forties, fifties movie music. Right, reminds me of um, some of the music on Actor by Saint Vincent. Okay, and I think she's another one who was very influenced by these I guys. I see that, yeah. And there's a two note part toward the end that is very much psycho. That do, 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 do. Yeah, that you get in the psycho soundtrack, and you get in this very just, yeah the uh, most interesting song on the album, or one of them, because the the end are really interesting. Too. It's only like 30, 40 seconds long. Yeah, it's certainly the shortest. Um, yeah. to do something that interesting with a sh with such a short song with an actual whip player yes, for lack of a better way of putting it. The whip. Oh, that's so funny. On to track 13, Letterbox. They go back to country with a very quick vocal. I thought Greg Graffin could sing quickly until I heard this one. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't even know if I could hear everything Flansburg was saying. Um, on to track 14, Whistling in the Dark. Another one of my favorites. I yeah, like this is really good. Reminds me a lot of Oingo Boingo. Yes. Um, and I, I get, and I think, and the uh, Boingo was an influence. Boingo ended a few years after this album. Um, I think Danny Elfman must have been a big influence on the Johns. Yeah. Um, there's a great drum hit after the title. It's just this big bass drum, and not even a, like a. I, I usually say kick drum because of you know my studio background, right? Because the ones used with a drum kit are are you kick. This is an enormous bass drum that you have to put on a stand. You know, that it, it, that's what it sounds like. Um, loved the kind of chaotic music and the call and response at the end, you know, whistling, 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 yes. whistling, whistling in the dark. Um, it's just this nice, really interesting melody, bizarre as hell lyrics. It's kind of like a pirate shanty, but not a quite bit. yet. Give them time. How, you know, <laughs> the only thing they, they want to do was whistling in the dark. Yeah. Uh, I, I feel like that must be a reference to something, but I don't know. I, is that a euphemism you're saying? Or, or just like an old superstition, you know, don't whistle in the dark. Yeah, maybe. maybe. Um, on to track 15, Hotcha. Which, uh, they, they, I, I call, just call this a weird Al pastiche, you know? Yeah, it's kind of a weird Al thing. Nice groove. Um, the drums really reminded me of early 90s hip-hop. You got to imagine yeah. Weird Al with influence yeah. on them, right? Oh, absolutely. Weird Al's the other one. It's, I think it's they're kind of equal parts, Weird Al and Danny Elfman. Yeah. Um, with probably some Tom Lehrer. I mean, Tom Lehrer influenced every... This is this is geek music. Yeah. These guys were the original nerd geek, geek rock band. Yeah. Really. Um, well, Weird Al really was. But then these guys were... You know, Weird Al was more of a comedy act. It's, well, right, right. These guys were the first really proper geek rock band. 
Um, and we are now all influenced now for all of them. And as did Tom Lehrer. Um, Tom Lehrer is the guy who rewrote um, Major General, as, you know, modern Major General, as oh, the wow. elements. But he listed all the elements. That's okay. Tom Lehrer. Um, I think he was a big influence on these guys as well. Um, Hacha, back to the back to Hacha. Great early 90s drum machine sound. Remind me of a lot of hip-hop around the time. I liked the intermittent horns during the piano solo. There's this piano solo in the middle, where it, and there are these, these random horn stabs during it. Uh, on to track 16. This is the proper sea shanty. Men and, yes. Women and men. <laughs> It's just, and that's when it hit me like they were really thinking about sailors on this album. Yeah. <laughs> you get to birdhouse to you know this is the point where the album gets properly weird. Yeah. They go out weird. <laughs> um I, I love the harmonies on the second verse. Um I don't really know what the lyrics are about other than women and men coming from an island together. <laughs> um, <laughs> On to track seventeen, sapphire bullets of pure love. As my uh, my notes from the first listen is, I'm not even sure what the hell is going on here. <laughs> <laughs> this is the weak one for me. Um, the groove is very very eighties, especially the bass. Oh, yeah, my my third listen today is like it's kind of an eighties Wang Chung pastiche yeah, kind of about uh, these weird lyrics about guns and bullets. Like if you listen to the "Live and Die in L.A." soundtrack, yeah, yeah. it's very like that. Yeah, and I love the title track from that. Um, but it's you know it's it's about guns and bullets, except it gets to the chorus and it's about sapphire bullets of pure love. <laughs> and this is again where it gets. Pro- I mean, the sea shanty is kind of weird, but this is properly weird in terms of lyrics. And then we get properly, properly. <laughs> we get really fucking crazy with their own theme song. Yeah, with the, the track 18, They Might Be Giants, titled after the band or the movie, whatever. I call this insane country. It's a jazzy rockabilly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of more rockabilly, yeah. Um, with these atonal horns and weird voice samples interrupting yes. them, which were very disturbing. <laughs> And even the guitar solo was disturbing. I don't know how a guitar solo can be disturbing, but it was. Again, Flansburg takes another solo. Um, I have no idea what to make of this one, but it's one of the most... It's like I've never been so disturbed by a song before, but I kind of love it for that reason. Uh, and I, I don't know what else to say other than it's weird and disturbing. Yeah. And kind of rockabilly. And on to finally track 19... Road movie to Berlin. They ended with the ballad. Yes, like a, nice simple arrangement, like a just, western kind of ballad. Yeah, yeah. Just where, nice where simple country. Vocals, uh, acoustic guitar, organ for most of it. Just a nice simple <laughs> ballad until it goes very cabaret for a few seconds. Right. But about three quarters of the way through the song, there's just literally just like ten seconds where it gets loud and cabaret. Yeah. And, and then, then back it, to the country, and the western. Then back yeah. to the and they, like I have it. I last thing in my notes. They waited till the last two songs to get properly weird. <laughs> I mean, they might be giants is baked in weird. They are weird in their DNA. Thanks yeah. to Weird Al and Danny Elfman and Tom Lehrer and whoever else influenced them that I don't know about. But they like they waited till the end of this one to get just. <laughs> uh, unspeakably weird. <laughs> like I like my notes it's sapphire bullets of pure love. I'm not even sure what the hell is going on here. <laughs> and the last two songs don't fix that. <laughs> no, no. But would you recommend it? Yes, the, with that in a heartbeat. Yeah, I absolutely do recommend it as well. I can't say I liked most of it, but I respect the hell out of it, and it was definitely an experience. Like, and I don't know if like is any other album I can say. Or there aren't many other albums I can say are an experience. Yeah, you know, the first time I heard, or I, I would say, New York Gypsy All Stars are an experience. But there aren't many other artists who I can say it's just you have to hear this just to have in your brain that it exists. <laughs> you know, <laughs> just to take it in. Um, and these guys definitely are in that category. That's it for Flood. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe if you haven't. 
Until next time, and we'll be revealing Artificial Heart by Jonathan Colton, which was produced by John Flansburg, which is why we're doing it next. Nice. Always remember, never forget, wherever you go in life, there you there are. You are.